Oh, oh, oh. I dropped it. Damn it, Mike, another fumble. Is it raining in here? <laughs> so what happens? <laughs> you just add 45 million gallons of water, and you will fumble the ball 16 <laughs> times. That's how many gallons of water? <laughs> it felt like it. A lot of water. Do you think Coach was a little upset about those fumbles he last was, week? He looked, he looked pretty out of it. He looked at the, on the, from the sidelines. He was a uh, little, little, little uh, miffed by it. A little bit. I get excited every time he covers his mouth and starts cussing out the assistance man. Grab your pencil and your paper at the obligatory future pregame show. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the obligatory PSU pregame show. Penn State is on its bye week, but we are still going, coming to you as we do every week from Champs downtown, enjoying our new trail beers. And uh, we've got a little bit of a different look this week, which is just fine. We've got a little cheeriness on the end of the table. <laughs> two, right now. two last men standing. By the way, Michael, you got to hold on to this for the rest of the segment. Six points of pressure, okay, buddy? All right, right in here. Does everyone know why I'm here and not over there? Goon finally beat me in an arm wrestle. Yes. That's why Goon got the pit. He got that. Seat. I'm officially one in seventy nine against Mike in arm wrestling. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. He's like an old Navy guy over here. He's like he's like blue from the Navy. <laughs> he's, he's, he's wiry. <laughs> he is wiry. Yeah. I've, I've been lifted for two days. I so know, mailman, right? we got. I'm your fake host, Chris Bucanani. We got. Hello. Keith Goon Conlon filling in for Noble, who is off making money with the national. Can we just say Noble fills league? in for me? I think I, we're, we're about to that, that point. point or what? We are we're about to that point. Yeah. I can make up some fake football that I got that in the NFL, uh, too. I mean, geez, okay. Louise. Wow. Yes. And uh, no Kevin Horn this week, which I know is either, either going to thrill wow. or infuriate our <laughs> viewers. But it's great, I think, this week as we're stopping and, and reflecting on 5-0 and oh, to have a recent player perspective, Aeneas Hawkins joining us for the whole show. Good to have you here, man. Why not? I'm, I'm excited to be here today, man. Thanks for being here. So you said Kevin's not here, and the sun just shone brighter. It was like, <laughs> so what bright the outside. hell's going on here? Yeah, yeah. We let Aeneas know before the cameras rolled that he's got to be super negative yep. and you know <laughs> miserable, slumpy. I, I, and you guys you know wear, wear weird t-shirts, you guys know, shirts. You guys know we're five and zero, oh, right? That's one third of the way of my fifteen and zero oh prediction. You know that, right? You're right. All right. You're on the money right one now. One third away. That's okay. Bye week gives us a chance to reflect Spell on the it. season and what's coming ahead. But let's look back to last week, and I want to get your impressions, guys, from the Northwestern game. Obviously, we had a little fun with all the fumbles, which were not fun in the moment. Certainly not for coach, and definitely not for every single one of the running backs on the roster, practically. But James said in his post game comments that he does not excuse. The, the weather. The ball security issues because of the weather. Goon, your thoughts? Well, it is what it is. I mean, first thing I asked Aeneas over here was, do they do wet ball drills? And that is they usually Thursday or Friday. You know, it, it, Joe was adamant about it back in the day, and that was he, they, they would just throw 10 footballs, like just dump them in Gatorade buckets, and then the, the center quarterback exchange has got to be handoffs and this and that. And so that you, you're used to working with wet and slimy and you know, all that crap. Uh, Oh. And that's exactly what we had on Saturday. But did you see a center quarterback exchange fumbled? Uh, not on our not, side of the ball. Northwestern had some issues with it. Penn Couple State. Of, well, did that was not. because the guy had 42 pounds of eye black on. Yeah, all that eye black. I mean, what the hell? That's ridiculous. I, I, I just don't. I mean, I just don't get it. I don't. I don't understand it. I, I. I don't. I don't. I really don't. The eye black thing on. It's cold, rainy, cloudy, like cloudy. Crazy. <laughs> he's got. He looks like Batman upside down. He did. He did. Right. Yeah. Batman upside down. I'm on it. I respect him I mean, more if it's an O lineman. You know, maybe somebody who's playing a physical game. When I see the quarterback, and do you don't want the sun in your eyes as an O lineman? If I, I'm not saying that, but if you're a quarterback, you've got 17 pounds of eye black, and uh, you're not hitting anybody. To me, it's like, what are we really? Does that here? stuff actually work? No. Eye black? It doesn't do anything. Right? Maybe for the maybe. sun. Yeah, well, it, it, what it's used for, when right. it's used properly, yes, it works. It's very, very good. I mean, it keeps the sun out of guys' eyes. It, it, it does actually work. It does now, work. Oh, yes. Oh, when it, when there's a hurricane. But now we're now we're turning into. Wins, you don't. You probably don't need the eye black. I mean, it looked like Mogwa from the last Mohicans out there with all the, the face paint on. I mean, and it is. I mean, it looked like a lacro I mean, it, it, it's 
it starts young age and works its way up. So there's, there's it's, it's, it's a fashion statement. Of course know? it is. Yeah, everybody, and everybody has to. Maybe have, we'll get some of that for you. We gotta you. build the brand, yeah, baby. Gotta build the brand. Well, you gotta build I'm the brand. Ready. That guy might get sponsored by the quarterback. Might get sponsored by uh, some iBlack company oh, out there. Yeah. Well, that's possible now. Man. Sure, about yeah. NIL now, man. So yeah. I don't want to. It's all about brand whole, building. <laughs> I don't want to spend the whole segment talking about the fumbles, but I am curious. So what what kind of ball security? Because I know, like. James is adamant the ball is the franchise, right? What kind of ball security get jewels are they doing on a regular basis? Yeah, I mean, every day you're going to see guys with uh, with a big rubber band attached to them. They're running it against the wall and coming against that pressure and dealing yep. with guys trying to strip them. You okay. see coaches running around with water guns yep. and uh, the water hoses spraying guys. But again, Coach Franklin doesn't typically go into any of those situations, uh, especially considering things like weather, unprepared. So I'm sure all week yep. they were doing things to protect that. And again, five turnovers, five fumbles. It's not a good look, man. Yeah, James Franklin, look. what's his position at Penn State? Coach Franklin. Head, head coach? coach? Okay, so he hates fumbles. Doesn't matter what, what who it is, yeah. they, head coaches hate fumbles. Oh, yeah. No, but the best thing I ever saw that uh, has been instituted in the last 20 years, when they started putting those, uh, I don't know, like like silk fabric around the balls and then, and then tighten them up. Yep. So it's like something you really got to grip onto. Yep. And then it's on there, and the guys are just smacking at it and stuff like that. And... Uh, I don't know. Well put. So yeah. Well put. Yeah. So okay. This is the, the, <laughs> let me tell you, that is the kind of analysis you come to obligatory for on a weekly basis. <laughs> what I say? I, so false? We'll, we'll, we'll run it back for you so you can listen to the whole thing front to back. Uh, I, I want to get some other impressions from the game, though, other than the fact that Penn State had a disaster when it came to ball security. They still won, they won. despite not playing a good game and despite turning it over five times. And like you said, actually... Five fumbles, credited with four, but for sure put the ball on the, on the ground five times. Yeah, I, I say that one thing that was a positive in my mind was the way the defense kind of held up every oh time they got put in those sudden change situations. I think that's the mark of a championship team, hopefully. Now, I will say, Sean Clifford was making some throws that were erratic. Again, raining, but Coach Franklin said it once, and he'll say it again. It's, you know, the standard is the standard regardless of the weather, and you got to play up to that standard. So, good to see the defense doing their thing, though, regardless. You think they're ahead of where they're supposed to be? Because I don't, I wasn't expecting that this dominant of a defense this early. I think I mean, they're, and they're dominating. There's yeah, no, there's no yeah, doubt about it. They are dominating. The, the secondary has dominated from the start, but I'll tell you Correct. what, the biggest difference to me is P.J. Mustafa yes. looks healthy oh, and the oh, Keen Beeman is starting to play high-level Ooh, football baby. and they're playing together, so it's exciting stuff to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. clogging up that middle yes, bit. They are. They yeah, really, really I really are. thought low-key what could surprise a lot of fans this season was how good the defensive line could turn out yep. to be because you've got talent and depth. To me, one of the exciting things is you don't need the same guy to be the Correct. guy every yeah, week. Yeah. There are three or four guys who can be dominant, and if that, if any one of those guys is on, it elevates the rest of the line. Nick Tarburton. I was has about a great to say we got to talk about Nick Tarburton. Oh yeah. I got to say, as an offensive lineman, like there are people who take plays off when you when a defensive end or defensive tackle, and they're in there ninety plays in the game, they're taking plays off. Yep. Yeah. But if they're in there four or five straight plays and they're going to get replaced and they got to go. Balls to the wall. Yep. For four, you know, four or five plays, and then they get then they get replaced to go to the sideline and, and catch your wind. That's, That's the these are that, they're the worst players to play against because it, you you bring the lunch pail because you got to go to work every play because there are times where you can take a play off here and there because other guys do but when you got guys out there doing that you're in trouble. And credit where it's due, mailman. Yes. Uh, we have given the offensive line a lot of guff on this program over the years. Over the years, yes. Other side of the line of scrimmage, I thought. Given the conditions, the O-line played very well. Yes, they did. And aside from the ball security issues, not for nothing, you have two different backs rack up 90 yards on the ground, one in the first half, one in the second. I mean, the run game is night and day from where it was last yeah. season. So I'm walking in the stadium up to the game, and my wife's like, oh, this is going to be so bad for the players. Oh, man, I feel bad for them. I'm like, don't feel bad for them. I mean, you're married to an offensive lineman. This is the greatest thing in the, in the freaking <laughs> world. Everybody's your speed. That, it's the great equalizer. Wood, rain and water is the great equalizer, and there's no way around it. I mean, that guy could be willing to get us out there, but in that rain, everybody's slow. Last thing I'm going to say before we cut to break, shouts to the grounds crew at Beaver Stadium. It's Even though that water was dumped on it, didn't see any mud the whole time. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Good job. Shout out to the tailgate live with the stadium view. What a great spot. Damn it, I've been waiting all week. Taking a shot up at the tailgate live with the stadium view. What a great spot. Welcome back, everybody, to the obligatory PSU pregame show from Champs Downtown, like we are doing every week. 
We are sharing some highlights from the Blue and White Players Show, which I do with Goon and Aeneas every week. You can watch it live on the social feeds of statecollege.com and Onward State at 6 p.m. Eastern every Monday, and then it's archived there as well. So without further ado, here are our highlight reel for this week. Enjoy it. As I gotta ask about this past Saturday, when you're playing in basic monsoon conditions. Oh now. my gosh. Now he tells me that's an O line lives for that. So yeah, talk, yeah. Talk about it, 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 in the rain a little bit. I'm go out there and eat dinner in it. It was beautiful. I'd say that's probably in my like top five games, probably my number one game. Awesome. I, I really wish we won we won it because it was such a well fought game was uh, last year against Michigan State in the snow. Yeah. That was yeah. such a fun game to play. And then you get in the locker room after I mean Pretend like there's no winner or loser. You get in the locker room after, and you're like, man, what a fun game you just played. Yep. And then you like, look at the quarterback, and he's like, that was awful. <laughs> like, I couldn't <laughs> do every, anything. Every receiver's yeah. all pissed off. They're, they're, they're yeah. taking their gloves their over. Their fingers are crying. cold. <laughs> they're like, man, I didn't, I didn't catch any balls this game. And then you talk to the O-line, it's like, oh, dude, like, I punched him, and like he flipped over him, and then you slid <laughs> over there, and it's like, you're playing in your backyard again. What was it like when you got to come out of the tunnel for the first time and play in front of the home crowd uh, when you played against Ohio a few weeks ago? Just talk us through what's going through your mind in that game. Uh, it was really amazing, honestly. I mean, I remember uh, sitting in my dorm room at, uh, sitting in my dorm room uh, at Hutchinson Community College uh, when I first got out of high school. And uh, I remember watching the 2019 uh, Michigan versus uh, Penn State whiteout game and just being like, man, like, you know, I wish or like, you know, hope one day that I get to play in an atmosphere like that. I never knew that I would actually get here or be here, but, you know, it was always a dream of mine. That's amazing. To, you know, and and, and then awesome. you're out there in front That's of that awesome. crowd. Hey, does that stick with you for very long or, um, you know, did you, did you take a moment or two to take that all in? I think in the initial, like, walk out of the tunnel, you know what I mean? I'm kind of like, okay, like I'm here, like, you know what I mean? But then it's kind of like, you can't stay in there too long because you need to focus, you need to yeah, be locked yeah, in, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if I, maybe if I was just sitting on the sideline and I was just spectating, like, you know, I could, I could be Fourth like that. Fourth quarter up 25 points, you can look around. Yeah, but like, like in the moment, it's like, okay, I got a job to do and I right. have to do it well, you know what I mean? So like, my goal is to execute at the highest yeah. level I can. So yeah. I feel like, it sh Once I got to the sideline, it kind of all that went out, and I wasn't even focused on the crowd. Like I was just focused on, you know, whenever we got on offense, you know, I was going to execute at a high level. So. Do me a favor. Next time you run out, look up at the, uh, the straight ahead, the addition up top, the north end zone. Mm -hmm. So look at the top people. They're this big. Yeah. You're just, you're just like, oh, dude, wow, this is real. <laughs> We're here. This is really, really, really real. It's yeah. amazing. You're right. And then go on top of the suites and the top of the press boxes and see the state police uh, sniper boxes, that's fun. Yeah. I mean, we've had our struggles in the past, and I mean, that's all on tape. I can't really speak that much for it. You got COVID and then battling through all that kind of stuff. But uh, I mean, this year, when you, got, when you got young guys behind you that are, you know, they're just coming in, and they're so passionate to be running the ball in Beaver Stadium for 107,000 fans, yep. and this is the first time they are doing this on a college level in a college atmosphere. I mean, they are like just super jacked up to be back there. And like when they hit the gap, I mean, it's like they have one thing and one thing on their mind is like, I'm gonna score. Because like they're a freshman 18 year old yep. and they're about to score in Beaver Stadium. And I mean, that energy that they have when like we come to the sideline and they're like, a oh, like, they're just I need some great tissues. blocking, like all this kind of stuff. Wipe these tears off my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we feed off that energy as an O-line because I'm a fifth year and it hasn't diminished my love for being on the field and playing, but we don't have, you know, that twinkle in our eye anymore. Like, oh my gosh, like right. we're playing in Beaver Stadium. <laughs> it's, it's just, we're used to it. And like these guys, you're I mean, enjoying each moment as a senior. Yes, That's what you do as a senior, you enjoy it. First of all, I know. I mean, I'm I'm a college football junkie, so I actually watch watch a lot of Hilltoppers games uh, the last couple of years. So I, I knew we were getting a good player when when you came here. That's a wide open offense. What what was the transition like for you coming from the offense you played in the last two years at Western Kentucky into Mike Yurcich's system over the summer and the spring? Uh, I mean, I, I think a lot of people has like you know asked me that question in the past, but um, what a lot of people don't know is this is my fifth offense I've been in. Okay, so, right. Like yeah. you know, I've been in a similar offense you know to this my first year, second year. So I mean, it's not like 
I'm like, I played football before, so it's not like, you know, I was just, I was in a past happy offense last year and everybody wanted to know how I would adjust in this offense. But I feel like at the end of the day, it's just about learning the offense and learning your assignments and execute. I feel like that's what it really comes down to. And, um, you know, at first in the spring, of course, you're going to have bumps in the road um, as far as, you know, learning the plays and that type of thing. But for the most part, the coaches, Sean, you know, I mean, everybody really helped me, you know, develop and help me learn the offense. I can't say about the past few years, but I know this year, you know, we got three guys on the team that are um, six years at this point, just with the COVID year. Yep. And I mean, you don't come back for, <laughs> you don't come back for a sixth year to kind of repeat the same thing you did your fifth year, you know what I mean? So there kind of was a clause, I would say, with those guys talking to them and their teammates about coming back, like, hey, if I'm gonna come back, like, things are gonna change, like, we're doing this, that's, we're doing this. And I think like everyone's kind of embraced First time that. I heard that, man. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's, I like I, to hear that. It's a it's a respect thing too. Like they don't they don't need to tell us that like hey we need to do better this year. It's like well we try to do our best every year. Yeah. But there's a respect thing where it's like these guys are coming back for a sixth year to help us. And it's like if we don't give them our best effort, then like what do we what does that show for the guys below us even? You know what I mean? Yeah. Nice answer. You talked about sitting in your dorm room and looking at the 2019 wideout against Michigan. Um, and knowing that you wanted to be a part of something like that, but not necessarily knowing that you would be, what did it take to get from that point to the point that you're at now mentally? Uh, I can't say it was easy, for sure. Uh, there was a lot of days, you know, when I was like, man, like, I don't know if this is gonna work. You know, especially, you know, my first year, 2018, when I first, you know, of course, when I first went to uh, JUCO, I was like, you know, I was like second, third string. So I wasn't, you know, I was second string. I was playing a little bit. I was playing mainly special teams. Uh, but, you know, I was like, okay, like, some, some way, somehow, like, I got to make it happen. And I felt like, for me, that was just my, always been my mindset, you know, throughout these last three, four years is just, you know, make it happen regardless, you know what I mean? Just execute. Good stuff. Hope you enjoyed that. Because it is the bye week, we had a chance now to dig back into the archives of things we wanted to share with you earlier in the season, but just ended up on the editing room floor for one reason or another. We've been doing a Letterman Legacy every week, and we've got more with Jordan Hill, because he gave us about 30 minutes of solid content coming up in the next segment. We hope you enjoy that. And then after that, we have some outtakes from Mailman's visit to Penn State Media Day and his bar tour from downtown, and a little bit more about what happened after we shut off the cameras last week, or thought we did, but I forgot to let Kevin make his pick. So enjoy all that coming up next. Solo cup in my right hand, pig skin in my left. Feels so right, man. College football's bad. Yeah, we're waking up. Uh, Jordan Hill uh, played 2009 to 2012, played defensive tackle. I'm from Stilton, Pennsylvania. Navarro was actually the first person to scream at me at Penn State. First person. Not John Thomas, not Joe. It was Navarro Bowman. We're going through summer workouts, and it was, it was. I think the first week of, of July, we started doing player ran defensive drills, and we're going through. Jared Odrick's teaching me something, and he starts walking me through something, and I walk the drill like he walked me through, like hey, go slow, and I walk through, and somebody just starts going off, and Navarro comes up and approaches me. This ain't, excuse my French, this ain't what the f we do. And he's like losing his mind on me. And like Jared has to say something to him. Like, no, I'm teaching him. Like he messed up. I wanted him to walk. And he goes, oh, oh my bad. And then he goes, we got a standard around here and we can be damn good. We got beat by Iowa last year when I think we should have been in the national championship. And that's what I'm trying to do this year. And that was like my first experience. Like, oh, this is a little bit different. It was Navarro. And then obviously his play speaks for itself. Uh, but I don't think a lot, enough people know the actual leader that he is and, and was um, as, a, as a, a football player, right? He's a quiet guy by nature, but when something needed to be said, he said it. Uh, first thing would be probably uh, Craig Fitzgerald. Um, first day today, actually, you're on campus and we're there, we're working out. And I guess they were there and we're just being introduced. He has him and his whole um, strength staff dressed in all black. 
and knows when we're walking in the locker room, bust through the locker room doors and yelling that this is an effing funeral. Um, and then the first actual, what is a 5 a.m. workout, um, all we see of O'Brien before that is on ESPN of him cussing out Tom Brady on the sideline. So we have no idea actually who he is, what he does, what he's good at, and our perception of him is him screaming at players. And we're probably 15, 20 minutes into a workout and he makes us restart it. And he's screaming at somebody, screaming at somebody. And I think it was Anthony Zetto turns around to me and is like, he's yelling at you. And I turn around and he kicks me out. And we go through the workout, whatnot, I shower up. I try to get out of there as fast as I possibly can. And we, whether I think he did it on purpose, he's waiting for me at the end of the All-American Hall after you come out the locker room there in the last, at the opposite end, and that's a long hallway. And I'll try to walk past him, and he's like, get your head up. And he's like, if you're half the man that I heard you are, he was like, you're fine with me yelling at you. He was like, I need to come in here and own this team. It needs to be my team, and I need my leaders to be able to lead and, and, and really follow me. He was like, if you have to man, you'll be back tomorrow. Um, and like right then and there, I was just like, all right, that's that's somebody I want to play for. Um, and then just, you know, his actions after that continued to just follow what he did, what he said every single day to us. Solo cup in my right hand, pig skin in my left. And it just feels so right, man. College football's bad. Yeah, we're waking up on <laughs> okay, <laughs> the next question I have. If you, um, do you have a nickname? Um, I mean, a lot of guys call me P-Dub, Dub, nothing crazy. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah. One guy just said he didn't have a nickname yet, so his, his roommate's going to help him with that. <laughs> I, what is my nickname? <laughs> Barn Dog. Barn Dog. Barn Dog. Barn Dog. No, how'd you get that uh, nickname? Uh, there's a lot of big names, I would say, but one sticks and that's how it goes. Can you identify yourself, please? Uh, I'm Gabriel Wosu. Okay, thank you. I have a few questions to ask you. All right. Do you have a nickname? Nah, I just go by Gabe. That's really it. That's it. So a lot of guys on the team have a, have a nickname, but you don't. You just go by. I mean, I just go by Gabe. I mean, some people call me Bigfoot, but okay. The main thing, I just go by Gabe. Okay. I can't imagine why. Yeah, and you haven't gotten one yet. <laughs> I mean, you guys think it? Well, we've got something to work on. Though. We got yeah, something to work on. We got something to work on. We got to work on. Do you have a nickname? Uh, yes, yeah, Slab. Did you like that nickname? Uh, I gave myself that. Oh, you gave it yourself? Yeah. Okay. So, so where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. What town? Uh, Sussex County, New, New Jersey. 078-973. I'm the mailman. Uh, that's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> CV. Just that, my initials. Okay, so you created that or did they create that? I did not create that. My, um, my friend, when I went to high school in Buffalo. Um, one in New York? My wife calls me, uh, no. <laughs> Buffalo, yeah. New York, okay. Yeah, Canisius in downtown Buffalo. One, one, my, 14201, the zip code. I'm the mailman, I wouldn't know that. I, I, I forget the zip code. Okay, okay, just, just, just so, <laughs> I just, forget the in, zip code. in case you're right home, you can. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Man, they don't know us to hit up a shot that John Clifford. Oh, yeah. We'll see you tonight. We'll see you tonight. Cincinnati Slinger. Who's, who's next? Hold on. Is this the only building you had to deliver to when you started? I never delivered. I'm not a real, I'm not a real mailman. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go. The other people are down there. We'll go. Come on. They've been going on. Hi. They've been going on for 50 years. Three beers and one shot. Uh, a woman from Mexico on our tour said, mailman, you have to have a tequila. And that's their drink, so I had to have that. You have to be polite, you know? You have to be polite. It was good, actually. I usually don't have this roll, but I'm, I'm not. <laughs> everybody hurry up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Shots. Shots. I guess I'm having another tequila. I still don't think they're gonna play their best game, and I think they're gonna try to continue rotating guys in. So I have got the Nittany Lions winning 35 to 13. Who cares? It's randomly generated numbers. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the season. Drink new trail beer. We're back next week. If you want we my are. pick, just tweet at me. And stay. <laughs> Should go pick for horn. You didn't need a horn pick.
No pick for horn. He just forgot me. Did I seriously not let you pick? Correct, yeah. <laughs> Well, I see it's at seven. I see it's at six thirty, and I'm like, Chris is gonna go to seven, isn't he? <laughs> it's. I, I thought I let you, here, Johnny. Do you want to reshoot it? I'm uh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Come on. No, no, it doesn't all, matter. That's okay. No, let's redo it. It really doesn't matter. Well, it's funny that Kevin said if you want my pick, tweet him. Just yeah. tweet at me. It's fine. He didn't say that. It was pretty. It's good. not worth redoing the whole segment for that. Who cares? I don't know. I've ruined Chris's week. So. Yeah, right. He's done. He's done. Have you ever done this before? No, don't. No, I mean posted. <laughs> I know. I knew. I knew exactly. What you meant, and, I, and I answered honestly. Uh, Chris, who cares? Done. We're good. We love you. I'm taking it off. Yeah. UTSA sucks. Do you, uh, what do we want to do here? Do we want to reshoot it? Uh, I mean, I just filmed all of this. So if you want to use any of that as like a segment of your embarrassment, to oh. kind of get you. Oh. I, I, I would. That would be funny, but I don't know where I'd use it. On Instagram or whatever, you can do it on Facebook. You can have Onward State. Do it out later. Statecollege.com. We can barely get out of podcast, Johnny. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? We gotta go. Yeah, we're good. We're yeah, all right. That's it. Taking a shot up in the tailgate lot with a stadium view. What a great spot. I mean, whatever. Everybody knew he was going to pick Northwestern anyway. Oh yeah. You know, it, sure. it's fine. Sure, it's <laughs> fine. Uh, maybe people just think, by forty though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe people think he was just so offended that he just skipped the show and he's, he's never coming back. No, so seriously, you know. honestly, God, I, I, I watched it up in my house on the weekend when all my friends come to town. They, yeah. we, we have a tape, and they're like, "Dude, how close are you to punching that guy?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "You're so close." Like you're, they're just like, "Just give a little." <laughs> <laughs> but when you gotta have it, I mean, he, it, we bust his chops all the time. But you know, he keeps it real. You know, absolutely. You know, yeah. As I've said on some of our promotional reels, he is the most beloved and most hated member of the cast, mm -hmm. He's which a, is crucial. He's but not an icon. One thing, and watch this transition that I know has made Kevin very happy and myself, is if you get into Beaver Stadium early enough this season, which is sometimes a struggle if you're enjoying your tailgate. True. For the first time in a decade. You see a lot of Joe yep. in the pregame videos. And I mean, I love it. Like, Aeneas, you were, I think, in diapers when uh, <laughs> Joe stopped coaching here, but uh, you played for Joe. Mike, you actually knew the man. Oh, yeah. I was Mike lucky enough to. Joe. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. You, you babysat him a few times, right? Right. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I ran into him a couple of times on right. campus. Always had fun interactions with Joe. Um, one time we were going up the uh, press box elevator for the blue white game because he used remember he used yeah, to yeah he used to call the game he used to do the radio with I Steve Jones the thing, thing, you know, the, the, the thing you know and, that's what they're doing you know I had my press pass on and I had a, a goatee at the time because it was the early two thousands mm. and he, and he tugged my beard yeah I had to let you have these now I had to let you have chin whiskers <laughs> try that nowadays. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a different world even back in uh, 2000, 2001. But I bring up Coach Paterno because we are doing a cool thing uh, this year, Goon, 
on the Players Show. We're promoting it here on Obligatory. See this helmet right here? This is on our set every week on the Blue White Players Show, and we are having every single letterman and current player who comes on the show sign it, and there's only gonna be one of these. It's a combination of Penn State's past and present, and we are giving this away at the end of the season to someone who makes a contribution through the URL that you see on the screen. It's S-O-P-A, Special Olympics of PA, paternofund.org. You can make a contribution in any amount through to the end of the year, December 31st, and if you make that contribution through S-O-P-A, paternofund.org, you will be entered into drawing to win this one-of-a-kind autographed Penn State any football amount. helmet. Any amount. There's, yeah. no, there's, no, there's no minimum to get involved in the drawing and stuff like that. So. And, you know, you will be supporting a great cause. You will be honoring the legacy of Joe and Sue. And, and really, that was one of the things that made what he did at this university so unique. It's not only that he led for so long sure. and so effectively, but he really embraced this community and, and, and the Commonwealth and, and, and gave Sue, back a lot. The, the, and, and the whole Sue family did it. It was amazing. And all of that. What, it was, what, they, what they have done and what they have, and they still and she still gives to the Special Olympics and, the, and, the, and the, everything in Pennsylvania and Penn State. It's just been amazing. It's an honor to, honor to have played for him, and uh, yep. anything we could do to help out would be great. Yeah, not for nothing. I, I, I feel I got to say it. After everything that has happened at Penn State over mm -hmm. the last decade, the amount of involvement Sue Paterno still has yes. leading and raising money for this university is amazing. Right. SOPA paternofund.org. Contribute today. We'll be right back. Thank you. I've often felt that the best people on the campus are on our squad. And I think they ought to have an influence on other people as well as other people having an influence on them. I just want to hear the fight song. And you can check your phone. I ain't worried about that. Yeah. About to lose my voice for this third down sack. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's the obligatory PSU pregame show. Enjoying Penn State's bye week. We're here at Champs downtown, as we always are, enjoying our new trail beer. And Goon, you got to every time you say that. it, I just laugh. Yeah, go ahead. I had a, a, an, an older aunt who, back in the day, they used to give the little wallet schedules out. Remember sure, Mikey? Oh yeah. oh yeah. And it had the date on it that said BYE bye. Oh, right, and yeah. my aunt was like, I, I know who BYU is, but who the hell is BYE? <laughs> and she was like perplexed, and I'm like, it's a bye. And she's like, what is that? I said, well, it means we're not going to play that week. It's a bye. We we don't play. And she's like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. And she felt, you know, the whole, <laughs> oh, I, I should know that better, but why did you put it on there? <laughs> Thank you for sharing. BYE. And every time you say bye, I laugh. I, I, <laughs> and or whoever says it. I miss those little cards. Sure I know, have, right? They go right. Your, and now it's all on your phone. All now. the teams, all the teams. There were different players oh. on them. You could get oh, them yeah. all around town. Mike called yeah. a billfold, though. You know that. You know, uh, yeah, you know yeah, Mike, yeah, Mike yeah, did no not doubt, call a lot. No doubt. <laughs> okay, so I do want to talk about Penn State season in review a little bit, but I wanted to get a reaction from you guys just because we've got a little bit more flexibility in a bye week, a BYE week. Show. BYE. Big news in college football last week when Wisconsin fires Paul Christ <laughs> mid-season. 41 games over 500, and you hit a little bit of a speed bump, and he's gone. Man, I, I feel like that is not taking the sport in a good direction, but yeah. in the I think this is maybe the direction that it's going. Right? Yeah, it's definitely going down a different type of path. I think it shocked me because it's like, it's again, 41 games over 500, taking them to multiple Big Ten championships. It seems to me like they've wanted to get him out the door for a while if they were so quick to get him out now. Yeah, yeah, and you would have to think so. You would have to think so. And then the thing to me is as well, as a guy who just got done playing, it puts their players in a tough situation. They wait till week five of the season to do it, which really kind of limits players and what they're able to do transfer-wise and redshirting-wise, and it's not the best situation for them either. So it's interesting stuff over in Wisconsin. Yeah. Do you think that they really just had a hanker and they wanted Jim Leonard as their head coach? Uh, that's and it was going to happen no matter what. It was the first first that was the opening stumble that they were going to try and give it to him. Now, I got a little oh. crazy story for you here. So there is rumors that Phil Fulmer sort of tanked his defense back in the day to get rid of Johnny Majors and take the Tennessee I've, job. I've heard that story. You've heard those stories, right? So you have to. You really got to start sitting there thinking like, I mean, what we saw in Wisconsin the first four weeks of the year, that's not the Wisconsin or the first five weeks of the year. That's not the Wisconsin we've, 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 we've come to know. Right. And they have more five-star 
players on their roster right now than they have in the last 10 years total. Correct. All recruited by Paul Chris. Oh, by like, yeah. like, should I be wearing a tinfoil hat instead <laughs> with the way this is going? Yeah, I, look, Jimmy Leonard's turned down other head coaching gigs and wasn't going to keep doing that for too long. Yep. Although it does seem interesting. I mean, you're still sticking in the Barry and, and Alvarez I am not, culture tree. I am no, not I, insinuating I that whatsoever that that happened, but I'm just saying. You, you just brought it up. Oh, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Okay, so shifting <laughs> back to Penn State. start somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was infamously, uh, along with Kevin and Noble, so they're not on the show to eat crow, I am. I, I was not bullish on the prospects of this team coming into the season. I thought it was very possible we'd be 3-2 and two right now instead of 5-0. and oh. uh, A lot of factors affecting the hot start for the Nittany Lions. So I'm just going to go down the line. I'm going to start here with you, Keith Goon Conlon. Give me one. No, no, no. Are you going to apologize first? Or I am not going to. We'll see. We'll see. Holmes. Let's, let's wait until they play their next three before we start ripping out the apologies. Oh, right? I understand. But, okay, give me give me one thing. Your your, your favorite thing you've seen from Penn State Favorite thing? Years. I, 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 you know, you do the radio show at least, so you've known what I've been saying for the last three months. And I was down on these guys for a while and this and that the last few years. But, and... I'm telling you, it's that defense and that man number 97 in the middle who's going to go out there and physically make his teammates better. And I just had that feeling. It was going to mean, you and Aeneas and I had, had lunch a couple uh, about a year ago, and he, he made a comment about Mustafa, and I said, dude, I really like this kid. And losing him and then seeing the way our defense played last year, knowing he was coming back and coming back with a big old chip on his shoulder, I had pretty good feelings about it. So... You know, it, it took a little bit, a, a couple games for them to get the Manny Diaz thing down, but I mean, they are buying in right now, and they are, they are rocking and rolling. That goal they, line stand is ridiculous. It was fantastic. I mean, that's, that's old school Penn State yeah. team. Sure it is. Yeah. All right, so I'm guessing, Aeneas, he probably stole your thunder. The yeah. offensive okay. line guy goes to well, the defense. What do you got? I'll tell you what, I'll flip it on him. Yeah, yeah. Right. That offensive like line has been playing much, much improved yes, football compared to last year. They're able to run the ball now, and again, it reminds me of the 2019 offense when Journey Brown and Noah Kane were able to get going a little bit and being able to play off a of play action and have the run game going at the same time is going to help that offense propel forward. Now, again, I'm in the same boot in the boat as you, Chris, where it's like we have three tough games coming up and we'll find out a lot more. But as of today, sitting at 5-0, and I feel really good about what I've seen from that group. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you. you know, I think the defense, I always, I always have the theory that defense wins games. And I really think the defense has brought Brought Penn State back to life. How are you doing? It's, you hold that. You hold on to that football. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, hold on. I like the defense. See, he is salivating over. He wants to swipe him so bad. I'm trying. I'm trying not to strip him. him. Yeah. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting to see improved performance on the offensive yes. line yeah. out of Penn State. Yeah. I, I, I'm with the knees. I didn't like, it, it's I, really I happened. love the way the defense is playing. There are a lot of different things I could talk about with the D. I'll probably touch on a few things in the next segment, yeah. but. You mentioned no problems with the quarterback center exchange and yeah, driving the rain that was and wind. Good, yeah. Last week, Juice Scruggs playing really well. Sal Warmly, Olu Fashanu. You know, I think a lot of people forget Landon Tangwell is only a redshirt freshman. Correct. He's getting better every week. It's, yeah. it's exciting stuff. Go back to what you said beginning of the season. You were looking forward to a bounce back season from the tight ends. And that's just oh, been a boy. hell about of a, that. Hell of a bounce back that's for these boys. Yep. Yeah, so it, you, you want to see everything gelling together, and so far, so good. So we'll have our record predictions on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. Mike the Mailman with another edition of Trends to Treasure. This will be for the weekend of October 15th. First off, we're going to start in the NFL. We have the Buffalo Bills at the Kansas City Chiefs. Buffalo is 6-2 in the last eight away games at Kansas City. So the play is the Buffalo Bills. Jumping over to pick two, we stay in the NFL. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Steelers are 5-1 in the last six games. So the play is Pittsburgh Steelers. Staying in the NFL for our third pick this week, we have the Seattle Seahawks hosting the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona is 6-1 in the last seven away games. The play here is take the Arizona Cardinals. At last, we're at our bonus pick. We have the East Carolina Pirates hosting the Memphis Tigers. East Carolina is a strong 12-2 in the last 14 games against the Tigers and a whopping 8-1 at home. So the play here will be the East Carolina Pirates hands down. So that's it for week six. I'm Mike the Man Man. We'll see you next weekend with another edition of Trends to Treasure. Don't forget, bet with your head and not with your heart. Go get them. Welcome back. We're at Champs Downtown. I'm Chris Bucanani, your fake host. I got Keith Goon Conlon, our professional scab. Hello. I've got Mike the Mailman, the beloved campus icon. I've got Aeneas Hawkins, the former Penn State defensive tackle, recently medically retired from Penn State football and now into this 
interesting <laughs> media and broadcasting based world. It's a different world. I'll yeah, tell you I know. Mean, so, <laughs> Aeneas, you were all over the place. So you were on Nitwits last week. Yep. So, so there's a more TV for you. You do the players' show with us on Monday night. Yep. And you're doing the uh, pregame show on the radio here in State College. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm doing as many things as possible right now, just trying to get my repetitions up so I can be like these three when I grow up here. Boy, That's oh, the goal. Uh, let, let, <laughs> let, let, let me strongly dissuade you from <laughs> using any of us as a, as a role model. Maybe an example of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's very instructive. Oh, so maybe you, maybe you should look at your father as an inspiration. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Okay, so. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, Anise, we get better with age. The more you, you do this, uh -huh. I get better and better every year. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love I'm, it. I'm officially a great player from Penn State. I was like the 13th top player on the 11 man roster. <laughs> <in the offense. laughs> it's fantastic. I get better every year. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if you all knew this, but he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Oh, uh, there we go again. No. I know. So random number generator segment. We typically randomly generate some numbers predicting mm -hmm. the upcoming score. I think we're going to beat BYE handily. Yeah. So we own them. Usually during this off week, sorry, Coach wouldn't want me to call it the off week, but I just did. We try to look back it's on our the bye week. You can't call it an off week because it's not off. He, may, he was working. very emphatic they're about working, that. They're working. Yeah, they're working. Yeah. They're working on their ball security yeah. drills, just like Mike the Melvin. Coaches are quirky, aren't they? Not just I'm ours. They're all of them. All of them. They're all quirky. They're all lunatics. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we like to go back and, and, and revisit our season record predictions and just look ahead and, and see what we're expecting from the season. Uh, now I know why Horn's not here. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm the only one who's really going to have to. You know, I had, when I failed the test, I always called in sick the next day. Ah, I don't feel too good, Mama. Ah. So, Goonie, you yes, were sir. not on our season record prediction show, so you didn't have to go on record. I'm on record somewhere. Oh, yeah. Radio and then 24-7. Uh, okay, yeah, I can't also. remember what you picked. 24-7, so. I was 10-2. and two. Okay, so how are you feeling about that? I feel very, very comfortable. I mean, my question to you guys is, what are you going to these next three? This is the gauntlet yes. that I raced. I mean, I can't imagine anybody having a worse three games of anybody in this country right now. I mean, you think about that. You can and probably feel sure a little bit better about yeah. Minnesota, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, but just a what little. are you happy with? You happy with two and one? I mean, we're all ecstatic, obviously, at three and oh, but are we, I mean, two and one, I mean, I'm okay with that, but I would, I mean, I'm marking up with Minnesota personally. And I'm really sitting there saying I think that that Michigan has really played nobody. Yep. And we have a couple of tough games under our belt right now. So just announced a noon game. So it's 11 a.m. for them. Might be a little slow out there for them. We jump them early. I mean, I just I have a very good feeling about this team. I really, really do. And I'm again, I'm growing horns because I'm getting more and more bullish every week with them. So I'm okay saying we're going to go two and one through this because Ohio State is definitely that that that. We need to play a spectacular, perfect game to get over that hurdle. The way yeah, they, they look right really, really they look, good. They look, they look amazing right yep. now. I, well, I thought Shiana was going to go back to uh, hit, go across the field the other night. I like that. <laughs> yeah, how, how do you feel about that? Uh, faking a punt to kind of put there's no way in he, place? There's no way he called it. No, I, I agree. no way. That's a, that's a, that's a the total. Punter, the punter saw that and he just took off. Yeah, that's yeah. a slappy punter thing. Yeah. You know, he the, you know, he should be beat up in the in the uh, in the locker room just be, being a punter for one, oh, yeah, and then secondly, right. just for doing first. that and <laughs> but, causing all that commotion out there. Wasn't that an Ohio State game in Rutgers? Weren't they seven and seven at one time? The score was seven to seven at one time, wasn't it? With Rutgers. Yeah. I got in late on that one, so. I think it was. I was yeah, well, Rutgers scored first actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that was pretty much the high point. It. With yeah. that said, I like what Shiano's doing down there. He, he, yeah. It's ridiculous how good of a coach. I mean, I'm scared. In my pants are might be filling with crap right now thinking he might go to Nebraska. You put him out in Nebraska with his recruiting ability and that yeah. the ability atmosphere. to build the program yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he's not sitting there fighting for ever. He's not fighting for fans to come. They're there. There's 95,000 every week. I, that scares me that, that he could go out there and do that. Well, Get him out of the division, at least. But I wish him and Day would have gone out. That would have been pretty cool, though. All right, I know it's BYE week. No more Rutger talk. All right. <laughs> Damn it. Three-game stretch. You going to be okay with two and one? I'm okay with two and one. Uh, I'm okay with two and one a lot more if all three of the games 
if the one loss is, is close, okay? If we okay. go to Ohio State and we get beat by 35, okay? You go 2-1, and one, that's one thing. But if you get blown out against what is a playoff caliber football team, then it's going to hurt them down the line in terms of their playoff argument, which I know everybody would love to see. Now, again, at the beginning of the season, nobody thought that they'd be 5-0 and going to this point with the opportunity to even be talking whoa, about the playoffs whoa, still. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said my man right here, the mailman. <laughs> he he was on always oh, delivering. All right, yeah. <laughs> mailman. Uh, well, first of all, what's your record prediction? Final I'm, final record. I'm gonna go 11 and one. And I'm gonna stand on that. I think the depth on this football team is gonna carry them through. And we keep talking about how good Ohio State is. Ohio State's receivers are really good. We have the best secondary in the country, and I can't wait uh, yeah. to see how they match up. I agree. It's I fun can't matchup. wait to see how they match yeah. up. Mailman, hit me with it. Go I mean, ahead. I mean, the Big Ten. I told you last week's down. I think every. All the schools are down. I think Penn State, I don't care who Michigan's played before. It was a week. It doesn't matter. It's who they play. When Penn State plays them. I don't know, Mike. There's a six-way tie uh, atop the Big Ten uh, West division a, right now. Okay. A lot of competition. There's only four teams. Oh, we're there. <laughs> well, we're going to be there. We're going to be 3-0 in the next three games. No problem. Not a Mikey. problem. Not a problem. Not okay, a problem. so again. I, mean, I hope we're not just trouncing over Michigan because Michigan's damn good. <laughs> They're legit. I mean, we're, they, they, well, we got a whole huge. show next week to talk oh, about that. We're, 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 we're looking big picture. We're showing yeah. one and there's the Ohio Noble State. and Horn are hiding under a rock because they don't they want to have to eat the fact that they picked a 7-5 and five <laughs> like I did. And That's I had right. in this three-game stretch coming up, you know how many wins I had Penn State getting? Goose it. Really? 0-3 uh, stretch. Good wow. gracious. And well, that so, could happen. Yeah. No. I don't want it to happen. I've got to go back and revisit my prediction, and now I am enjoying the season so much, and I'm not superstitious, but I'm superstitious. So um, <laughs> a little bit superstitious. Yeah, I, I, I just I'm, I'm, I'm a little stitious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to jinx it, so I am going to stick with the seven and five. You're welcome, Nittany Nation. Stay with us. We'll be back next week previewing the Michigan game. So long, everybody. Drink new trail. We are. Huh?